Okay, so let's practice a little bit with time series and forecasting. So let's create a new data set, new script. I'm going to import these libraries, forecast and fpp2. Sorry, fpp2. Okay, so first let's play a little bit with the data. I'm going to create a, a vector of times from 1 to let's say 100. And I'm going to define a new variable, let's call this y. That is going to be something simple, let's say two times two times the sine of two pi times t divided by seven. Here what I'm saying is that I'm going to create a periodic function every seven days. Seven is going to be uh, my time span. And then add some noise, normal noise, sorry, 100 elements with zero mean and variance, let's say some deviation 0.5. Okay, let's plot, uh, sorry, let's run this, let's plot this, and it should be a sign with noise. Okay, not too clear. Okay, nothing fancy, okay? So, let's create uh, our data, and, and our basic class is going to be not data frame or a vector, it's going to be a time series, so we're going to use the function time series, and I'm going to use this data that I have just created, and I'm going to say that the frequency is equals to 7. What does this mean? This means that I'm assuming that my units are days and the, the data is repeating every week. Okay. So if now I use print data, I take well, the classical vector from 1 to 100, but I see something interesting here. So the time series starts at 1, 1. This means the first day of the first week and the end is the, the, the 20th week, the seventh day of the 20th week. So as you can see, using this frequency seven, I've translated somehow the, the data into something that is related to time. Actually, I can add some, in, some parameters to print. Let's say, print this as a calendar. And you can see here, this is Monday to Sunday. And you can see that here in this data set, we have 20 weeks, okay? So these basic comments tell us that depending on the type of data that we're playing with, we're going to understand this in a different way, okay? So now, the basic thing that we can do is simply plot. So we're going to use the autoplot function of GGL forecast library. So let's autoplot our data. And here we go. So this is the data, this is time, and nothing fancy here. Now the good thing, that as I've shown in, in, the, in the theory videos, that you can add some layers. So let's add auto layer, and I'm going to include some predictions. Let's start with the naive naive method of the data and let's go into the future for a couple of weeks and let's say first that don't plot predictive uh, predictive intervals okay so let's plot this and you can see this is the prediction of course the naive predictor is very poor basically it's taking the last data set data point and extrapolating that for the whole two weeks okay we can add here a true and now we can see confidence intervals so Okay, this is telling us that we don't know anything about the data and the farther away we are going, the, the, the worse it's going to be our prediction. Okay, of course, this data is uh, strongly seasonal because actually it's periodic, so probably S naive is going to perform better. So let's try seasonal naive and here we go. You can see that, that, the, that the problem is the method is predicting pretty, well, pretty, pretty accurately, so the confidence bars are increasing with time because we are losing in information about the forecast and actually this looks very large but you can see here that sometimes we have this huge fluctuation so basically the method is taking into account situations like this in which from week to week we can have a strong difference between the maximum here and the maximum there or the minimum okay let's play with the other methods for instance let's play with random walk uh, random walk uh, forecast is the same as naive so let's add here drift equals true here the data is uh, is a sign so the, the mean value is zero the normal noise is, is has value zero so basically this should produce the same prediction as before but again uh, this is periodic it, it can mislead a little bit so you can see some trend download trend and this is because of this is not exactly zero because of the noise okay and last method let's play with simply using a mean forecast remember mean F, F, F stands for forecast. Let's remove this. And here we go. Okay, now we're taking the mean value of the series, which is almost zero. It's not exactly zero. 
it's almost zero and then of course the prediction is really bad we can put everything together so if we actually copy this and remove this oh sorry remove this part let's add a plus here a plus there remove this plus and here we go we can compare both methods all the methods at the same time okay we don't see much it's not very clear so let's put false in all cases so we can actually see the comparison okay and okay and here we go you can see different uh, parameters different values here so if you want a legend you have to add the series so you can say this is series equals uh, naive and I'm oh, sorry series equals seasonal naive and so on and so forth series equal um, random no, simply no sorry uh, let's call it this drift sorter and series equals uh, mean okay or average and here we go this fancy plot with different colors and different predictions of course the data is as strong as seasonal as i was saying so it's it's logical that the seasonal naive method is outperforming the other what if we create a new data set imagine that we repeat all the comments here but now instead of adding this this sign i'm going to take the cumulative sum of the norm so basically this is a random walk actually a pure random walk so the the random walk forecasting should be the best so let's plot this a little bit you can see it, this looks like the stock market again the naive prediction is oh sorry uh, let's create the data set the naive prediction is not very uh, interesting because it's taking the last the last data point phase value in this case the seasonal one is misleading and and this is because i i told the TS function here that the frequency is 7 and this is not true this is not periodic but this is why this is creating this uh, poor forecasting because it's going back seven days and it's repeating this forecast over and over again let's try the random walk okay this is working pretty well actually it's overestimating the, the trend so you can see that you have this trend here and this is why we're going down and the average value of course is performing really badly let's put everything together and again I would say that okay probably naive is the, the best one because it is a random walk so the last observation has as, as much information as the whole series okay so that's all so let me add some comments and i would upload this to my github account so you can play with the code and you can download it from the description